Hello everybody and welcome back again to the Travelling Brush Dippers. We have something a little exciting this time because our Denise has been out and about and we're going to talk about her latest adventures. So in this episode, Denise talks and visits Alton Broad. Denise, tell us all about it. Hi, well, I can't tell you how delighted I was to actually be able to get out and paint. And we're still not at a position yet where you and I can go and paint because that would require an overnight stay for one of us. So we're not quite there yet, but I did manage to get out on a nice crisp, bright day, a little bit cold, a little bit blowy, but it was just such a joy to be able to get out and paint. So I went locally to me to Alton Broad um, and I would like to show you through the painting talk about the area, show you a few little clips of the area, um, and hope you can enjoy coming along with me. Oh, we'd love to, because that really is your thing, isn't it? Going out to paint, you love to do that. Whereas yes. a lot of um, artists like to take the photographs, have the visit, and then come home and work in the studio. So you're, yeah. you're pretty, pretty special in that respect. Well, for me, I mean, I still love painting in the studio, but for me, the joy of painting outside is I think there is something about the smell, the feel, the weather, the wind. And you will hear it was quite a breezy day. Um, so, you know, I think all of that, I think, translates into the painting. And when, yeah, when you come back into the studio to paint, you lose some of that elemental um, part of, of the experience. So. Yeah. Um, I do love it. I, I mean, really, that is the premise of the travelling brush dippers. We were we were out travelling, painting in situ. Um, so that was all kind of where this whole thing started, wasn't it? Absolutely. So this is going to be the first trip out, really, for the brush dippers as we are now in this reincarnation, isn't it? So uh, yes. tell us all about us. Show us where you've been. OK, let me bring up the, the video and that that kind of has a little introduction to it and explains where we're, we're at. I cannot wait until the two of us can get out and paint. Oh, and I know. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited about that. But let me bring this up. Morning. I'm sat out here in the beautiful sunshine at Alton Broad and I'm at the Commodore pub, but it's too early for them to be open yet. And I'm sat here and I'm gonna do some painting just done a couple of quick little sketches and it is a stunning morning the sky is amazing so I shall turn you around in a minute and show you where I am um, but the Commodore pub is a favorite spot for me to come and paint they do amazing coffee amazing food um, but at nine o'clock in the morning they're not really open yet so but they have given me permission to sit in the garden and have a little bit of a paint so I'm going to start working and I'll show you what I'm doing So this is where I am, I'm at Alton Broad, and the sky is glorious, the weather is lovely, it is cold, it is still only April, um, and I've painted different aspects of this view so many times, but it's a, still a favourite spot of mine. And I think today I'm going to do a view across here, towards the Clisson. So I've got my drawing done and I'm now just wetting the paper. The sky here is beautiful today. There's some puffy Simpsons clouds on the horizon. So I'm just going over a few times. Just to make 
make sure it's properly wet. So if it's properly wet, then I have a little more time. And it's bright and it's sunny out here today, so I'm doing a mixture of blues. I've got ultramarine, and I think that's a peacock blue, which is a gorgeous colour. more of the colour and I'm, I'm negative painting so I'm painting around the clouds You never get everything out that you want to at the beginning, do you? You're always rummaging around for something. That's true. <laughs> just push some of this colour back up. Because I'm on a slope, it's going to drag down. It's a time to do all of this. Just gonna dab a little bit with my cloth. shadows into here which are going to be more purpley so it's ultramarine with a little bit of rose you just have to do it don't you when it's all wet like this you can't stop to think too much no no speed is the essence isn't it really do it and then leave it alone. Yeah. You're very close to the cauliflower stage. You can still see the shine on the paper, but it's beginning to go back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. the edges particularly. Yeah. like it when the sky's done there because that's the biggest challenge and then it's just breathe the rest of it is, is in control true it's the daunting part isn't it really and i'm having to learn up here just how big the skies are in south norfolk and suffolk because kidding. yeah it's it, there's, there's nothing to block your horizon so they're huge you're not kidding Oh yes, I can see it's drying off rapidly. <laughs> yeah. Your area has appealed to artists at time immemorial, hasn't it, because of the skies? Yes, yeah. Constable, Turner, you know, there's there's been lots of lots of artists. Yeah. And it appealed to us. Oh, it's fabulous. That's a super sky, Denise. Thank you. Last few bits, and I think I just need to be calm. 
breathe. <laughs> and I think I have to stop there because if I don't, I think I will overdo it. It's drying. Bravo. Bravo. That's lovely. Thank you. So we've got some gold going along here, which I quite like in contrast to the purples and blues in the sky. This gold is a reed bed on the other side of the broad. Oh, I was going to ask you if it was a sandbank. So I've come back out today and I've been around and I've done a little bit of filming around the area. So I'm going to show you a bit of Nicholas Everett Park. I'm going to show you a couple of the pubs in the area because that's really important and a view back across to where I've been sat painting. Coming in with a little bit of gold. Now I was actually using some gold watercolour paint so and some silver on the water. So there, there is just little bits of shimmer in there, which I quite oh, like within a wow. painting. What a good idea. So where is this then, Denise? This is Mutford Lock. And Mutford. this is the, yeah, this is the edge of Alton Broad. I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a second, but it's the only working lock left on the broads. Right. Then we have these boats here. Now these take out tourists on day trips up and down the, the river. So if you don't want to take a boat out yourself, you can go on one of those and Every year I've kept meaning to do so, I've been busy, and they can reopen in I think. So I'm definitely going out there for a day out um, and just see where they take you. Oh, yeah. Take some photos. Oh, of course, and the sketchbook. Yeah. Um, but this is just looking across to Nicholas Everett Park, which you'll see a bit more of in a minute. Um, and I was just going to say about Mutford Lock uh, being the only working lock left um, on the broads. Mm. and it connects the, the broads themselves. So Alton Broad is the southernmost broad of them all and it's the only one in Suffolk. Uh, and it connects the broads through to a place called Lake Loathing, which is the, the lake that takes you to the estuary and to the port of Lowestoft. Okay. So that's the kind of last um, divide between the broads and the North Sea. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's what that is there. And I quite like it. Um, I think I've, I've put in a couple of shots of the other side of, of the, um, the lock and there's a bit of a, a boat yard and a working area. And I find it fascinating because there's lots of steel and pipes and yeah levers and things. I had no idea what they're for, but they fascinate me as an artist of shapes. Yes, I, I do enjoy a good boat yard actually. Yes, and we've got lots of them around here. I'm sure you have around your area as well. We have. You? Yes, we have. Yes, for just for interest's sake, I'm down Portsmouth Way, so I'm on the south coast. And um, yes, lots and lots of harbours and marinas down here. So here I'm just so, putting some shadow along the bottom of the reeds, along the water's edge. And the reeds have been cut here for a long time. It's been a, a big industry around here, the reed cutting for, for many centuries. Um, and I think it's mostly now done by volunteers um, and, the volu and it, it's done to keep the health of the broads as much as actually being used. But more and more they are being used again. And traditionally the reeds were used for thatching around here. Yeah. So yes, rather it's than... well known, isn't it, for its thatched houses? Yes, yeah. Um, so, you know, they, they definitely use that. And, and literally by the house, we're, we're quite near um, the river here. And, you know, that there's a whole sort of reed banks that are 40, 50 foot deep as you get yeah. from the edge of the land to the water. I mean, excellent for wildlife, because while you were sitting there painting, we could hear the oyster catchers. Yes. They were chasing each other around and there was a seagull and an oyster catcher that were just, you know, they'd go one way with one in front and then they'd come the other way screaming the other, the other one in front. <laughs> so this is just looking back across the broad and you've got the old um, oast houses, I guess, on the other side there. 
um, and they've all been converted into flats and apartments. Um, what a lovely place to wake up in the morning and look out, eh? Isn't it? Yeah. So what would you those got... houses have been used for, do you know? I'm not sure. I, I presume it was grain coming in off the, the flatlands, coming in to be dried there before being shipped off to wherever okay. it was they were shipped off to, but not really. I haven't done enough <laughs> research on that one. <laughs> That's generally what they're used for, isn't it? I mean, it's interesting because oast houses have been used for all sorts of different things. We have oast houses here where I am, and they used to be to dry bricks. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. They're drying towers, basically, aren't they? Yes, yeah. Lovely trees, Denise. I love the way you've put the very fine branches in there Thank to you. kind of join up the tops and the bottom. I, that's just beautiful. Thank you. It's just leaving a little gap, isn't it? And letting yeah. things show through. Mm. Yeah, on the broads, there are lots of windmills um, and a lot of those were used for um, draining the, the channels to keep the channels clear. So oh. I don't think they're hugely deep. So they were, they were used as drainage windmills, but yeah. I know some of them were used for grain milling as well. So, you know, there's a mixture of things that they were used for. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you're leaving gaps there, aren't you? Yeah, Between just leaving those. spaces to put the branches in. Yeah, yeah, I like that very much. There you go. There they go. So you're doing that while it's still damp, are you? Damp, because I want those branches to kind of dissipate at the ends. Yeah. Ooh, but I have good. to say, it was quite a bright day, so things were drying pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. But having yes, got past that big sky, the rest of this is very easy to control. You've got time then, haven't you? Yes, yeah. Yes, that's that's the one kind of unpredictability, isn't it, about painting outside? Oh, where's this? This is the other side of Mutford Lock. So this heads towards um, the North Sea and Lake Loathing. So you've got in front of you there, you've got a railway bridge. Um, but this is where you've got um, boatyards and cranes and all sorts of things that just fascinate me. Yeah. So this is the other side of the Mutford Lock. Okay. And of which course- Which I have also painted. Oh, have you? Yes. Oh, well, if you can find it, can you pop it in here? Yeah, of course I will. We'd like to see. <laughs> See, this oh, where you can hear things in the background. This to me is also part of the joy of painting outside is you're part of the world around you. You're not necessarily involved in whatever it is they're doing, but there's life around you. And particularly this year, I think that that's a joy to sit and be part of. Yes, you're right. Yes. In actual fact, many people have found that this year um, who wouldn't necessarily have been aware previously because going out and about and walking has been our one form of exercise. And I have really enjoyed taking the camera and finding things um, that normally I might just have walked past. Yes. Now this building here, you will get to know this building later. Um, it is the um, Yacht Club and the, the Sailing Club over on the far side of the Broad. And regularly, you know, as in most weekends, they have little regattas and, and things going on around the broad and there's little boats. You have all the boats with the blue sails come out and go back in and then all the, the boats that have a certain class and size come out. And you would know this more than I do because your husband yeah. is a sailor. Um, but yeah, it's quite fascinating. So I will get back down there when they get up and running again, I'll get back down there and, and do some painting of that because I quite enjoy that. Um, everything going on really busy. I believe sailing clubs are going back pretty soon, actually. I think um, they've got some things going on, but I don't know if they're doing their full regattas yet. Right. But um, I just need to get down there a weekend and have a look and find out. Yeah, yeah. So do you always go and paint on your own? Usually, but no, well, more often than not, because I'm impatient and it's a nice day and I just put my stuff in the car and go. And you go, um, yeah. But no, I, I, I've i been out painting with you. I've been out painting with a few of the others from the artist demo days when they were able to, to come and visit. Um, I belong to the East Suffolk Plan Air Painters. So 
we get out and about um, about once a month. Um, so, you know, it's something I really enjoy doing, so it's whenever I can. Yes, yeah. I just wondered if you and um, your husband ever went out together and because um, Nick and I do that um, quite often. I sit and paint and he reads. OK. Tim's not very good at sitting still. <laughs> so <laughs> I've tried to send him off for walks and leave me alone, but he, he kind of comes back and then just sits there and stares at me whilst I paint. So I find it more relaxing if I go out on my own rather than the two of us. Unless we're going out to lunch or going somewhere that's a bit further afield, and yeah. then, you know, you will. I need you so to bring that... Nick... Sorry, say again. I was going to say, I need you to bring Nick down so that you can distract him. Yeah. <laughs> you were going to have ask you, me. Have you used dry brushwork on the foliage of that tree? Yeah, the top thin, thinner branches was a bit more dry brushing. Yeah. But just to explain what this is, on the other side, we've got all of these buildings down there and there is the, I presume it's the Harbour Master or the Broads Authority office, but there's some cafes and some shops and these are all thatched as well. And in oh, amongst that's... these, there is the most glorious little museum of Lowestoft. Oh, nice. So when you come up next, we'll have to go and have a little, a little second it. look. Yes, please. The lowest off has always been famed, am I right, for its fishing? Yes, particularly the herrings, the little little silver darlings. That's, yes. Silver darlings, they're called, are they? That's what they were called around here, silver darlings. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see I'm doing the dry brushing here, just sort of dragging the brush across. Yep. So presumably you've got access to wonderful um, fisheries and fresh fish where you are. There, there is fresh fish around here, but the fishing fleet has in an awful lot of places around here. So Lowest Oft and Great Yarmouth were both two great fishing um, ports, but they've both been in serious decline over the, the last few decades. Yeah. yeah, it is. There's a lovely little... Um, Herring Museum in Great Yarmouth, and there is um, Nelson Museum because Nelson lived around here as well. Right, yeah, okay. So, you know, it's, it's a fantastic history around here. Mm. Now, I'm very interested to see that you've left the center part of the trunks there quite clear, and that's the color of the paper underneath. You've yes. just, are you intending to keep it that way? Absolutely. It was early in the morning and it was incredibly bright. Um, there were some really long, strong shadows, which I'll put in in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And to me, to make those trunks really stand out with the sun on them, I just left them with the, just the paper. Didn't put anything yep, else on. Yep. And I like the way that you've darkened behind the building um, yeah. to ensure that the light roof stands out. Yes. I'm not Dark sure what against. that building will look like when we get back over there uh, later on in the year, because they were doing a whole load of building work. So it might not look anything like that anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what colours are you using there now? It's mostly um, ultramarine and actually I was using the ultramarine and some gold mixed together, um, but I would also I, have I used yeah. sienna or burnt sienna, something like that. Okay. Now we've jumped over to the Nicholas Everett Park, which is where I was, the view I was painting was the edge of Nicholas uh -huh. Everett Park. Uh -huh. um, and it's got a fabulous play area. It's really well maintained. Um, and in the summer, it's so busy here. It's, it's, it's a great little place. Um, and I don't know the full story of Nicholas Everett, but he was um, mid 1800s. He owned this piece of land. Right. And when he died, a very good friend of his bought the land and gave it to the community. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So got a bandstand and apparently that's really busy in the summer as well. I've not been to any events there, but, you know, they've, they've got a full programme, normally have a full programme of events. That's a good painting, though, with that tree behind the roof like that. Yes. Wow.
And even on a day like this, when it was quite cold, there were people sitting in their gardens, just looking at the at the water, having yeah. a coffee or whatever it was they were doing. I don't blame them. This is coming along very nicely. Thank you. Very nice. So you're doing all those fine, fine, hair thin lines on the trees with a brush. Yes. Yeah. and. Where I want them finer, I'm using the dry brushing to give me that broken mark. Yeah. Um, but you can see I've put the shadows in on the trees here now. Yeah, that's good. That gives it real atmosphere, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, as I said at the beginning of the film, it was quite early in the morning. So um, the shadows were really long when I first got there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure I got that in. And things like the chap on his bike and the person walking around, somebody walking their dog. As these people went past, I was just popping them into the picture. <laughs> Yeah, no, why not? That gives it movement, doesn't it, in life? Yes. So what paper are you using, Denise? This is a Bockingford 140 pound knot. Okay. I quite like the, the rough texture on there. Yeah. So where I'm sitting, standing here, this was where I was, the view I was painting. So this was kind of the area you could see um, mm -hmm. And that edge that I was just painting in was that that boardwalk, the edge of that boardwalk. Okay, yeah. So I'm just panning back across. I've got one of the classic broads boats here. So if you hire a boat for a week, it's quite likely to be something like that one. Mm -hmm. Very and nice. Then over in the distance on the right, you could just about see, I'll zoom in in a second. Um, that's where I was sat painting, where between those two white boats and that white building. Okay, yeah. And I've got some Love visitors. Oh, look at these two. <laughs> they were determined to see if I had anything with me. <laughs> Which unfortunately I didn't. Day. Isn't that glory? It was. It was just heaven. And we've had a few days like that this week, so it's been lovely. Um, so for people watching this kind of after the event, we're talking about the beginning of April, aren't we? Yeah, April 2021, and we're just beginning to be allowed out and about again. Uh -huh. um, and we've still got frosty nights, but beautiful mornings. So that, that's yeah. where we're at in terms of the year. Yeah. Oh, look at these two. They're lovely, aren't they? There's something about they swans. Are. Very majestic. Mm. Yeah, it's a lovely day, isn't it? Yeah. So, right, you can see there where that sort of what looks like a beach coming down to the edge, that's the bottom of yeah. the pub. Okay. Well, and that garden stuff. there gets absolutely rammed in the summer, as you can imagine. I bet it does. They're putting some nice darks in there again. You see, that gives you the shadow, doesn't it? Yeah. If you don't put the darks in, the lights don't stand out. They don't, that's very true. I bore my students to death with that, you know. Light against <laughs> dark, dark against light. Yeah, <laughs> soft against hard, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. And I need a recording that I can just press a button and it says it for me. <laughs> <laughs> button A, yeah. Yeah, completely. For the Star Trek fans amongst you, you know they've got their communicators. I need a communicator that I can just <laughs> Oh, how brilliant. <laughs> now I'm finding that as I get older, my, my distance vision is still really good. But my close-up vision is getting worse and worse. Yeah, yes, yeah, same here. It's, I've decided that it's, it's not that my eyesight's getting worse, it's just that my arms are too short now when I'm trying to read something. That's right, yes. Get somebody to hold it across the room, really. <laughs> It'll be fine then. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it's not so, good, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is that barrier that I was standing up against where the swans were. Yeah. Sat in behind. Yeah. And you have you done all of this with the same brush, haven't you? Apart from the big brush I did the sky with, yeah, it's all yeah. been done with one brush. 
I don't take too much equipment out with me. Well, no, because otherwise it becomes cumbersome. You spend too long fiddling about with it, don't you, to be honest? Yes. That's your favourite, the flat brush is your big favourite brush, isn't it? The one that you use for acrylics as well, am I right? Yes, yeah, it's a 30 mil flat brush and I just yeah. use it for almost everything. Yeah. I know you use a hake, don't you? Oh, I love my hake, yes. Well, that's one where my... I started was with the hake. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I struggle greatly to produce um, flat painting um, without lines in it if I'm not using okay. it. Um, yeah. I suppose well, the thing with the hakes is they hold water, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I'm used to it, I suppose. So therefore, you know, it, it suits me because I know how it behaves. It's, it, it's the difference between looking after your own child and somebody else's, isn't it? You know what Absolutely. it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you just get to a point because, you know, I'm slowly tiddling around and just adding bits of detail and shadows and lines and you just want to make it interesting, really. Yes. Give the eye something to look at. Yeah. 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 Oh, what's that? A little person? No, no, this is a life boy. So oh, it's just this oh, yeah, yes. bright red yeah. life boy on the other side. Yeah. So um, just put this in. You were saying about that brush, this particular brush comes to a really nice point. So you can use it for thicker marks, but because yeah. it comes to a nice point, you can get those really fine um, brush marks too. Yeah, I can see all the lovely fine lines that you've created with it. And here I'm just creating more mess. Just <laughs> busyness, busyness. Yes, that's a good word actually, yes. Yes, but do you know what's interesting? I can see that the trees that you've, you've put there in front of that building are silver birches. There's no doubt in my head that that's probably, oh, bless you. It, you know, um, and it's all in the shape of the tree, isn't it? And the way it grows. Yeah, I think when we learn to paint, we paint a generic tree, don't we? But yeah. the more you paint, the more you, you start to see the differences between shapes and forms and, yeah. and where um, clumps of leaves grow and how the branches work. Here. It's a stunning location. But the pub is now open, so I'm going to go and get myself a coffee. Hooray! And there we have the painting. So that, oh, that's, that's what I ended up doing. And I had a fabulous coffee and really enjoyed it. That is lovely, isn't it? So I'm going to stop the share. It's all right. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that was my painting. It was the first time I've had the opportunity to get out and paint plein air um, this year, actually. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you've enjoyed coming along and painting with me. Uh, I can't wait for us to be able to go out and, and paint. No, it'll be good, won't it? Yeah, it would be so nice to actually be able to meet up if nothing else. Mm. Mm. I've loved doing this Zoom sessions, but I still really want to get actually physically meet yeah, up. Of course, yeah, yeah. Indeed. We will. Yeah, we will indeed, we will indeed. And. One of the things um, I was just going to say to people, if you want to know what equipment I take out with me when I go out painting, I have actually got a video on my own YouTube channel um, with all the details of what I take out as a plan air kit. So I'll make sure in the show notes there is a link to the video of my, my plan air kit. So if you want to pop along there and have a look at what I take along, that would be fantastic. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, it is good. And I can't wait to get back out there and do some more. So, yeah, in that respect, thank you very much for joining us this week. Um, I've loved sharing my time outside with you. Um, and thank you for coming along with me and chatting our way through it, Sharon. Absolutely. And if any of you out there have pictures of your painting outside, pop them in the comments below because we would really love to see what you've been up to as well. And we can compare notes. And if you live in Denise's area out there in Suffolk and you've had a go at the broads, let's have a look.
Oh, absolutely. And I'm new to the area. We've only lived here about four years. So if you've got any little interesting facts about Alton Broad or Mutford Lock or Lake Loathing or any of those places that, that were in the video, mm, yeah, please do let me know because I'm fascinated to learn. So thank you, Denise. That was really, really lovely to, I, I feel like I've been out with you. Oh, um, thank you. So it's just been so nice to see the blue skies and to sit there and hear the winds and the birds. And let's hope that most of us get the chance to do that this summer and to enjoy our plein air painting as well. Absolutely. And I'd like to say thank you to Denise and thank you to all of you because you've been marvellous dipping into our conversation. Join Thank us next time. Thank you.